This movie deals with vectors. It is intended for viewing before students do a laboratory activity involving graphical, numerical, and physical addition of vectors. For simplicity, this lesson deals only with two-dimensional vectors. Upon completion of the laboratory activity associated with this movie, students will be expected to be able to describe vector quantities in terms of magnitude and direction, and in terms of Cartesian components. Determine the sum of two or more vectors graphically, analytically, and physically, and demonstrate that the net force on an object at rest is zero. A vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. Examples of vectors are velocity and force. To specify the velocity of an object, we need to specify not just how fast it's moving, that is, its speed, but also where it's headed. Graphically, we can represent a vector quantity by drawing an arrow. For the arrow to mean anything, it needs to be drawn in reference to a coordinate system. A convenient way of defining a vector with an arrow is to draw the arrow from the origin. The distance from the arrow's tail to its head will then give us an indication of the magnitude of the vector. The longer the arrow, the larger the magnitude. Drawing the arrow this way also makes it easy to assign a numerical value to a direction. The direction will simply be the angle that the arrow makes with respect to one of the axes. For example, the angle between the arrow and the x-axis could be used to specify the direction. Consider the red arrow shown here to represent a vector, which we will call vector A. It is convenient to describe a vector in reference to a Cartesian coordinate system. In the diagram shown here, we imagine the tail of vector A to be at the origin of the coordinate system. The magnitude of A, represented here by uppercase A inside the absolute value symbol, is equal to the length of the red arrow. The direction of A, represented here by lowercase theta, is the angle that the red arrow makes with the horizontal axis. You will note that the magnitude and direction of vector A are essentially the location of the tip of the arrow in polar coordinates. Obviously, this is not the only way of describing the location. As shown in this diagram, we can use the Cartesian coordinates AX and AY to locate the tip of the arrow. Similarly, we can use AX and AY as a way of describing vector A. We call AX the component of vector A along the horizontal axis, and we call AY the component of vector A along the vertical axis. In fact, we can imagine AX and AY as vectors along the X and Y axis and use this diagram as a basis for defining vector addition. If we define that vector AX plus vector AY equals vector A, then we can develop a generic procedure for adding any two vectors. These procedures are described in the following slides. For now, it is important to note that the vertical and horizontal components of any vector are related to the magnitude and direction in the same way that Cartesian coordinates are related to polar coordinates. From basic trigonometric identities in the Pythagorean theorem, you should easily be able to derive that AX is equal to the magnitude of A times the cosine of theta, and AY is equal to the magnitude of A times the sine of theta. The square of the magnitude of A is equal to the square of the magnitude of AX plus the square of the magnitude of AY. The ratio of AY to AX is equal to tangent theta. And theta is the inverse tangent of the ratio of AY to AX. The first two equations shown here allow you to calculate the components if you know the magnitude and the direction. The third and fifth equations shown here allow you to calculate the magnitude and direction if you know the components. Addition of two vectors can be done using several methods. Here we will illustrate the parallelogram method and polygon methods. In the parallelogram method, we draw the vectors with their tails at the same point. These are the blue arrows shown here. Where the tails meet, we call the origin. We take the two vectors as sides of a parallelogram and draw the other sides. The sum of the two vectors, which is called the resultant, is the vector represented by an arrow drawn from the origin to the opposite corner of the parallelogram. The polygon method is very similar to the parallelogram method. 
We simply draw the second vector so that its tail coincides with the head of the first vector. Then we draw the resultant from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. What if you have three vectors to add? You can first add any two, then add that resultant to the third vector. Addition of vectors are very easily done using the components method. This method is especially convenient if you have to add more than two vectors. The x component of the resultant is simply the sum of the x components of the vectors being added. Likewise, the y component of the resultant is simply the sum of the y components of all the vectors being added. For example, if the components of vector a are ax and ay, and the components of vector b are bx and by, we can add vectors a and b. The resultant's x component is the sum of ax and bx, and the resultant's y component is the sum of ay and by. Similarly, if the vector s is the sum of vectors a, b, and c, then sx is equal to ax plus bx plus cx, and sy is equal to ay plus by plus cy. The term equilibrant refers to the vector that, if you add to another vector, leads to a zero sum. In other words, the sum of a vector and its equilibrant is zero. For any vector, the magnitude of the equilibrant is the same, but its direction is completely opposite. In other words, theta for the equilibrant is 180 degrees from the theta for the vector. Note that in radians, 180 degrees equals pi. In terms of components, determining the equilibrant of a vector is very simple. The components of the equilibrant are simply the additive inverse of the components of the vector. In other words, the x component of the equilibrant of vector a is negative ax. Similarly, the y component is negative ay. In the laboratory, you will explore vector addition. You will add vectors graphically by drawing arrows on a grid, numerically by calculating and adding vector components, and physically using a force table. In the procedures, vector A, B, C, R, and S refer to the following force vectors. Vector A is 0.735 newtons along the positive x axis. Vector B is 1.47 newtons oriented 60 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. Vector C is 1.96 newtons oriented 270 degrees with respect to the positive x-axis. Vector R is the resultant of vectors A and B. We will refer to the equilibrant of vector R as negative R. Vector S is the resultant of vectors A, B, and C and we will refer to the equilibrant of vector s as negative s. Before coming to class, you should create a table in Excel listing the magnitude, direction, x component, and y component of vectors a, b, c, r, negative r, s, and negative s. Also calculate the masses you will need to exert weights corresponding to the desired magnitudes of vectors a, b, and c. Remember that weight equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. In the lab, using a ruler and a protractor, draw arrows representing vectors A and B on a piece of graphing paper. Let one centimeter of length represent a force of 0.1 newtons. Using the parallelogram method, draw vector R. Then draw the equilibrant of vector R. Measure the magnitude and direction of R and negative R using a ruler and protractor. Finally, using a ruler, measure the X component and Y component of vectors A, B, R, and negative R. Tabulate and compare with the expected values you calculated before coming to class. Repeat the procedures to determine the result in an equilibrant, S and negative S, of vectors A, B, and C. For your experiment, you will need to assemble the force table as shown here. The force table is a circular plate marked 0 to 360 degrees on the edge. Imagine a straight line from the center of the table to the 0 degree mark as your positive x-axis. 
Mount pulleys at appropriate marks for vectors A and B. Put a ring around the center pin in the middle of the table. Position the strings, which are tied, over the pulley so that you can hang weights on the other end. Select appropriate weights in order to set tensions on the strings equal to the magnitudes of vectors A and B. The tension is equal to the hanging weight, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Do not forget to include the mass of the hanger in the calculation. Once vectors A and B are set up on the force table, your goal is to find the equilibrium by finding the appropriate tensions for the remaining string. You will then set up another experiment, this time to find the equilibrium for the sum of vectors A, B, and C. Once you have set up vectors A and B on the force table, pull on the third string until the ring is perfectly centered around the center pin. Or if you have set up vectors A, B, and C, pull on the fourth string as shown in the picture on the left. This will establish the direction of the equilibrium. Mount a pulley in this direction. Put the string over the pulley and hang appropriate weights to center the ring. Once you have experimentally determined the equilibrium, calculate its components then calculate the magnitude, directions, and components of the resultant. Compare with the expected values you calculated before you did the experiment. If the ring is perfectly centered and not moving, then the net force on the ring must be zero. This means that the x components of all forces on the ring must add up to zero. You can verify this by adding the x components of vectors a, b, and their equilibrium, negative r. This also means that all the y components must also add up to zero. The same should be true for vectors a, b, c, and their equilibrium, negative s.